Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jenny. Good morning, Dr. Bati. How was your Lady weekend? in red. As always, I love red, my favorite color. Good morning, Ayomi Day. Ayomi, I know your name is not Ayomi. No, I love it. I just it's love fine. calling you Ayomi Day. You know that. <laughs> yes, it's good. Thank you. <laughs> well, all right. Good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? Sparkle. Great. I hope you had an excellent weekend. We no, had I had, a, I had a very emotional weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. We are beginning to work on that project. Dr. Bati, he said emotional. emotional. I don't know why you are smiling. What he said more emotional. emotional. Than that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we know the project. You better encourage him. Yes, we always do at Arise News. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United Kingdom, world leaders have congratulated the King of England, King Charles III, and Queen Camilla after the historic coronation ceremony that took place over the weekend. 14 prime ministers from countries under the monarchy and 90 heads of states, including Nigeria's president, Mohamedou Buhari, were all in attendance. First Lady Jill Biden, who represented the United States during the coronation event, said there was such beauty in the pageantry of the ceremony and it was just amazing to see the moment that a crown was placed on the head of the king and then on the head of the queen at the same time. In the United States, former President Donald Trump rejected his last chance on Sunday to testify at a civil trial where writer E. Jean Carroll accused him of raping her in a luxury department store dressing room in 1996. Trump has not shown up once during the two-week Manhattan trial, where the writer testified for several days, repeating claims she first made publicly in a 2019 memoir. She is seeking compensatory and punitive damages, totaling millions of dollars. Lawyers are scheduled to make closing arguments today, Monday, without Trump's testimony, while deliberations are set to begin on Tuesday. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, President Felix Chisakedi declared a national day of mourning on Monday in the wake of the flooding that has taken more than 200 lives. The disaster in Calais territory in the southern province of Kivu began on Thursday last week. At least 203 bodies have been recovered so far, but the death toll could rise as search and rescue efforts continue. Under sports, Nigeria's Super Eagles striker Victor Oshimen set the record for the highest scoring African player ever in the Italian Serie A following his winning goal in Napoli's 1-0 win over Fiorentina on Sunday. The 24-year-old who led Napoli to its first Serie A title in 33 years last week scored his 47th Serie A goal against Fiorentina at the Diego Maradona Stadium, where his club celebrated being crowned champions. Oshimen's latest goal topped George Ware's record of 46 goals that has stood since 1999, putting him on 23 league goals this season and in pole position to become the league's highest goal scorer this season. Finally, on our entertainment, Nigerian Afrobeat star Tiwa Savage dazzled the crowd at a coronation concert of King Charles III and Queen Camilla at the East Lawn of Windsor Castle on Sunday, performing a hit single, Keys to the Kingdom, from Beyonce's The Lion King album. The star-studded concert saw the Prince and Princess of Wales grace the occasion as they watched performances from other artists, including Take That, Katy Perry, and Oli Moss. Lionel Richie's song, All Night Long, got the royals up dancing. Prince William took to the stage after the performance to share a touching tribute to his father before the crowd sang the national anthem. I commit myself to serve you all. King, country, and Commonwealth. God save the King.
The Queen of Afrobeats has performed at the King and Queen's Coronation in Britain. Congratulations to Tiwa Savage. It was a phenomenal event. I missed it. A big congratulations yes. to her. Yes. Um, I yes. see some uh, bad weather people, <laughs> as we call them. They've been saying, well, what is Tiwa Savage doing there? That uh, some other uh, artists, like yeah. Ed Sheeran yes. and others, turned down the invitation and that uh, she went and identified with uh, colonial masters. Well, I, I disagree absolutely, completely yeah. with those people. I think it was a great outing for absolutely. her. Absolutely. And her performance was, uh, you know, very impressive. Yeah. If I thought she was going to sing uh, Roboske, Ske, Roboske, Ske, <laughs> so that we, we get King Charles to dance Roboske, Ske, Roboske, Ske, then she chose uh, uh, King It was to defeated, the yeah. really. But yeah. then, yeah. And then our attire. Yes. Congratulations also to yeah. Larry Da Silva. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ajayu, uh, the, who, who, who made this regal? Look at you, you know, Dr. Abati. <laughs> so, you know, this is Nigeria. You know, uh, representing, uh, represented well on the global stage from the perspective of fashion yes. and also in terms of uh, the performance of uh, Tiwa Savage. Yes. A high moment in our career. Absolutely. Ayo would say she was wearing Nigerian green. I, I mean, she really represented. And I know what you mean by the, there was a little <laughs> cultural twist to it because we yes. saw those drummers. I that mean, was my favorite so, part of our performance, so, actually. So beautiful. And of course, Lionel Richie oh got the royals dancing. I mean, who wouldn't dance to all night long? And I, I, I actually loved Prince William's speech to his father. Very short. But also, you know that uh, other Nigerians were featured at the coronation event by virtue of their positions. First, we see Dame Elizabeth Anyohu, who is a nurse, professor, and a medical scholar carrying the golden herb during the ceremony. She was the first nurse in the United Kingdom to specialize in the care of sickle cell patients. She is the daughter of a Nigerian, the late Lawrence Anyohu of Onicha, he was the first permanent secretary in Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs from 1960 to 1963, and also Nigeria's first ambassador to Italy and the Vatican from 1964 to 1967. Then we saw Reverend Tosin Oladipo, who is a chaplain to the Archbishop of Canterbury. He is also the chaplain at Lambeth Palace Chapel and at the community of St. Anselm Lambeth Palace. Tosin is said to have entered priesthood after a successful career in IT. He's the son of Reverend Emmanuel Oladipo, who spent most of his career for the gospel in northern Nigeria. The Reverend was later appointed Secretary General of the Scripture Union Worldwide. Then we saw Eva Oma Gomi, beautifully dressed in traditional Nigerian costume by Duba Sewa. Eva has been the King's Director of Community Engagement from when he was still the Prince of Wales. Prior to that, she worked with the King at the Prince's Trust and Clarence House. She was originally a civil servant with the Greater London Authority. She has worked with the King for the past 15 years. How beautiful was this lady, mm. regal in her traditional attire. I was. Mm -hmm. Very, very impressed when I saw all these Nigerians. And I know she's not, they're not the only ones. There were others. I mean, I can't pull up all the Nigerians that represented, um, you know, us at the coronation Lisa, ceremony. Of, yeah. uh, of course, President yeah, well. Muhammadu Buhari. Congratulations well, you, again to the, the king. The whole point is that this was an inclusive yes. you know, event. And that was the intention of the monarch to make sure that everyone is represented. Absolutely. And there were even kings there. Uh, king Blessed the third of uh, Lesotho, uh, King Nswati the third of Eswatini, the Osei Tutu, Osei Tutu the second, the Asantihene of Ashanti Kingdom mm. in Ghana. I, mean, I was looking for some of our own traditional rulers, you know, I bet at least who were just as well, well represented. Absolutely. Uh, and even the Deputy Assistant Superintendent of Police mm -hmm. uh, in charge of the operation is a Nigerian. He was interviewed on television. You know, and uh, was given that uh, high responsibility, you know, to oversee the operations. Yes. So Nigerians are everywhere. We're doing well. We're a country of diamonds. The only yeah. thing I'm waiting for is to see the Ashwe B come out. <laughs> you know, the no, there was an Ashwe B in Nigerian crowd. Yeah. No, no, like they, they should start selling it in Nigeria. The way they sold. <laughs>
<laughs> the Asher B no. in the last time. No. Remember that? Do you no, remember? People are saying, well, the Asher B for the May 29 coronation. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> but some Asher B so, people showed up to represent Nigeria. I saw that. I have that yes. video. I saw that. <laughs> uh, trust our people. Of course. Well, all right. Uh -huh. was also there. You know, Who? this was past Agui Ruku. Okay. Because yes, this was yes. the first time of other faiths. Yes. Usually it's the Anglican church that traditionally yeah. would lead the proceedings. But to show the diversity of mm. England, they had, uh, you know, leaders of other faiths and other denominations appear there. But he's one of our own. He's Nigerian or well, Nigerian British. But we, we're really proud of the representation of Nigerians. And yeah. he's highly, highly, you know, respected in the UK connected. Yes. That's the pastor of our dear Jesus House in London. I mean, if, if you get into London, you've not gone to Jesus' house. <laughs> you've, not, you've not visited. Okay, I haven't been, so I'm going. <laughs> you need to go to this Jesus' house in London. <laughs> Again, what can we say? Congratulations to the King of England, Charles III, and Queen Camilla. We'll take another story. Presidential candidate of Labour Party, Peter Obi, set social media bars on Sunday after posting photos of his visit to Nobel laureate Professor Wole Shoinka amid controversy between the professor and Peter Obi's supporters, the obedience. Peter Obi's visit is coming one month after Wole Shoinka in a television interview accused the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed of fascism, for faulting the declaration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as winner of the presidential election, despite not winning 25% of the votes in the FCT. His comment ignited heavy criticism from obedience. Peter Obi in his post on Sunday, lauded Shoinka over his achievements on the world stage and his struggle for a better Nigeria. Let me take Peter Obi's tweet. I'll just take one or two of them. Peter Obi wrote, today, I visited one of Nigeria's most revered figures and an international literary icon, Professor Wole Shoinka, Professor Wole Shoinka has been a father whom I hold in very high esteem for what he has achieved and stands for in the struggle for a better Nigeria. His reputation as a fighter for justice and equity in our society has been legendary and we will never ignore them. I had a very useful and enriching discussion about his aspirations for a better and greater Nigeria. Well, you know, a lot of reactions have trailed this uh, photo and the visit. I'll take one from, I believe, Franklin, who wrote, the real unifier. There are those who go only to people who are with them to an extent. Yours, you go to unite even those who are against you. That's how a true unifier is known. One who understands that leadership is about serving and not imposing or war. Thank you for this exceptional leadership character and teaching. Nigeria will work in our time. Refine over to you. I mean, truth has to be said. After all of that that ensued, the actions and the counteractions and reactions, it is a very dignifying thing. And kudos to Peter Obi. You see, when a man does well, let's say he has done well. And I think in all of this, he has shown that the unity and the continued peace of Nigeria is his priority. You know, to walk out and reach out to revert Professor Wallace Shoinka you know, to talk to him about the furtherance of unity and peace and development in this country, despite the fact that, yes, there might be diversions, you know, and, you know, divisions as regards thought process. You know, Professor Rolishinga was on this show, and he famously said that the position of, that Dati Babame took in that interview was fascist in nature and all of that, and there was a big blowback. But Peter Obi has shown that beyond reasonable doubt that he has a right to go visit anybody and especially highly revered Professor Walishenka, and I must repeat, because we cannot downplay what Professor Walishenka means to this country. He's still the only Nobel laureate in Nigeria as we speak today. No other Nigerian has won that highly coveted prize. Mm -hmm. And he has done well for this country in many ramifications. He's fought for the four runs of democracy. He had to go through the Nadeko roots and all of that. But, you know, after all of that, there are many things he has said after then on his statement that was at variance with what people thought happened on ground. Mm. And also, a lot of people, when he said that, were taken aback because when you look at what happened on ground, it was a danger of a single story. We can't just say, hey, that Ibaba Ahmed was fascist. What happened in Lagos? Wasn't it fascism during the election? 
that people were denigrated because they're from a certain ethnic group and treated unfairly mm -hmm. and issues were politicized and a man that just came out to vie for a position from Lagos Island because his mother is Igbo was treated in a certain way that was called Chinedu and some people pushed a narrative that oh Igbos are coming to take over wasn't that fascism well, if you recall, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie yeah. on this show actually put another yeah. name to fascism yeah. when she said that INEC is fascist for and, denying... And, 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 and I also want to go in the line. Vote. INEC that has not told us till date what constituted the technical glitch. Is that not fascism? Because, you see, a lot of Nigerians came out and, you see, I want to say this. If we want to build a country, let's build it with honesty and fairness. Let's not say because it favors you today, others can go and die. Mm. Because you forget what goes around will come around someday. The reason why a lot of people decided to come out and vote and trust the process was because INEC said we've brought in technology will bring about fairness. But today, INEC has not been able to t tell us what caused the technical glitch. And anybody that talks, everybody says, oh, keep quiet. Don't ask questions. I think that's the true fascism. But I think in all of this, I'm happy Peter Obi has gone to Professor Wallace Yunka. They've talked about things. They've ironed things out. Right. And it's for the furtherance of this country. And also, Professor Wallace Yunka is highly respected and revered. You might disagree with his thought process, but please, it's not worth it abusing or embarrassing the man. Right. He's done so much for this country, and he loves this country just like everyone. You see, the truth is we all love the country, but we might have dif differing thoughts and opinions. Well, all right. We'll take another story. Sonia Ikwere Madu, daughter of Nigeria's former deputy Senate president, Ike Ikwere Madu, who was sentenced to nine years and eight months in prison by a UK court on Friday, May 5th, in a controversial organ trafficking trial, was trending on social media over the weekend after the interview she granted the BBC in the wake of her parents' sentencing went viral. Sonia, during the interview, said although she understands why her parents were convicted, maintained that she disagrees with the sentencing. The 25-year-old, who is suffering from a kidney disorder called nephrotic syndrome, took the opportunity to apologize to her parents for the way things played out, stating that she feels guilty because her parents were sentenced due to her ailment. She also told the BBC that her experience has allowed her understand how dynamic life is and has also given her a new vision to help people with kidney conditions. It was mostly my family that handled everything to do with my um, medical side. Were you aware that your parents were trying to bring someone from Nigeria to the UK? I mean, I was aware that someone did come forward. I had just come over to the UK, I believe, with my uncle. My mom and I wanted to thank him for that. And the picture was basically uh, for memories. It was mentioned in court that this man was portrayed as your cousin. Did you know that? Did you know that was the case? No, you should have answered that. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't answer that. What's sort of been your lesson from all this? Life is just so dynamic. Like, you're, one day you're in your house, chilling. The next day, your whole life is turned, around, is turned upside down. So that is my main focus, trying to help specifically people with kidney conditions, um, just to sh show that they, that they don't need to be scared. Obviously, there's the support of my siblings and obviously my you know, parents' um, siblings as well. However, I don't think it would ever be the same. Um, I feel guilty because I feel like all this has happened because of me. Well, Ayo, a lot of people are saying that, uh, you know, this interview was ill-timed. I believe it was actually released before her parents' sentencing. But I was... Um, I am of the opinion that it was good that she was able to share her pain. A lot of people would disagree. Um, you know, they felt like it is uh, quite un insensitive because, you know, her parents had been convicted of such a, a grievous uh, crime. Right. Yes. Okay, so I'll just say that it was actually quite good to hear from the perspective of the person in the eye of the storm yes. or the eye of the legal battle and all. 
it was it's quite an interesting interview. But some, one thing I would pick out from that was where she talked about the process, and I believe that's where people would find quite offensive because it seemed as if she was sent pictures uh, for her to decide who should donate to her. But notwithstanding that, let's not forget that she's not an expert. She was just speaking from her heart, yes. and she was still distraught from what her parents were going through. Absolutely. Dr. Bati, a minute. Well, uh, I've had uh, many people say that if they were in the shoes of the Equire Mados, uh, they would have done exactly the same thing. Mm. At the base of all of this is parental love. Mm -hmm. Many parents would, you know, go to the out of utmost post, you know, uh, you know, to uh, protect the interests of their children. But we just hope that now that the matter will go on appeal, as we expect that uh, counsel to the Equire Madus would, uh, that, uh, you know, there may be uh, some ray of light at the end of the tunnel. Considering the fact that what is important in a criminal procedure mm -hmm. is conviction, not necessarily the uh, sentence. Yes. But thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Our heart you? goes out also to the victim of this whole case. Well, thank you all for your great analysis on what's trending today. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.